Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. This one is for the market gardeners out there talking about the tilther. Now this is a pretty useful tool for a couple different reasons. And I'm gonna give you the ways that I've been using it and how I've adapted using it over time and where I think it makes sense and what context. So this tool, like many of the small farming tools nowadays, are powered by an electric drill. And the tilther, if you've never heard of one before, it's basically like a mini tiller, only it doesn't have an engine or wheels, so it's not super heavy and it's not gonna compact the ground. And then the actual teeth themselves are only about an inch long. So you're only gonna get about an inch to two inches worth of tilling, essentially. It's not gonna really damage your soil health too badly, and I have seen no consequences from that. Having said that though, I do try to back off on using this and I only use it for specific reasons when I need to. So two of the big reasons that I like using the tilther is to incorporate amendments. And the second is to incorporate compost that may not be completely broken down or is a little bit clumpy that may get caught up in the cedar as we push through. There may even be some maybe leftover crop residue um, that you can help to turn under to help it break down in the soil and feed the soil better. Maybe you just got, took out a bed of arugula or something with thicker roots that maybe you didn't do as good of a job removing them um, so that you could reseed easily. This will also help to chop those very top surface roots um, the thickest part of that root that you can't push the cedar through. Now the roots that went deeper, we of course want to try to leave those behind so that they'll break down and be food for soil biology. All right, so let me show you guys how to set this thing up. The settings are really important and then we'll tilt this bed. So I use a Makita drill to do this and I, this is I run my greens harvester on. I've used it for three years. It still has no problems. So anyone who thinks that using a drill to power a tool like this might damage the drill, I have not seen any evidence of that. Um, a lot of people like to use the DeWalt drills for, for using this. So I'd recommend DeWalt or Makita. They just make really quality tools and I, I would rely on them. The next setting, that's super important. It needs to be on the pilot hole setting. If you have it on the drill to drive a screw, um, it's not gonna grab correctly. So make sure it's on that setting and then your torque setting, depending on your drill, how powerful it is, it's gonna change that. I like to usually run it at almost full power, 13 to 16, somewhere in there, all of it will work. Now, the next step, which is really important, I always forget to do this, and <laughs> I screw myself. You wanna push this bracket as far forward as you can and tighten it down. And then that holds the drill in place because it's you know experiencing a lot of violence and shaking as we're going down the row. So that just holds that in place, and now we're ready. The trickiest thing about this tool is getting the string right, and how tight you make it is really the key to that. Also, if I, I'm gonna take the battery. If I move, you see how it, if I move the teeth a little bit, it moves the string slightly. So sometimes as you lay it down, the string will fall out. So what I'll do is before I lay lay the tilter back in position, I'll pull the slack out of that rope and hold that really tight in my hand. Then as I lay it down, the string isn't gonna fall off of the trigger. Now when you're moving the tilter, once I activate the tilter, oops, don't forget to tighten the chuck key on there as tight as it'll go, that's what I forgot to do. So as you run the tilter, you don't want it to be up like this, it'll shoot dirt everywhere. If it's too low, you don't want that either. You kind of want it just really balanced and flat. Occasionally as you move, or if you have pretty loose soil, it may get stuck. A tip to get out of that is just rock it back and forth, and it'll crawl it forward. Other than that, you just want to provide a little bit of resistance in your arms, otherwise it can kind of fly away from you. So I just keep my elbows bent to my side. I don't recommend stepping on your bed um, because you're gonna compact, you're gonna ruin the seed bed. So you can walk and straddle the bed like this if you have a 30 inch bed. And you can angle this wood to angle it out more so that you can stand the pathway more comfortably. This tool is designed for a 30 inch bed. So you start 
at the edge of your bed, go down one side, go to the other side, tilt the other side. So in two passes on a 30 inch bed, it's done. So now look how amazing the tilt of that soil is. So this makes it really easy to run a direct cedar through. And now it's just, everything's just super smooth. And as you can see, the straw got mixed in quite a bit more. And we turned under some of the greens that were there as well. So as you can see, the tilter does an excellent job of incorporating in those left the leftover crop residue, my amendments, and my compost, and now I've just got this perfect seed bed. So now the next step would just be to rake it with my bed prep rake, and then I can just direct seed right in, good to go. And then that's it. We just water in and the bed's right, right back to uh, being planted again. So this tool is really one for mar people who wanna do this as a business and they need to reduce labor time. Um, and that's really what this tool is for. I've really enjoyed using it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody though. If you have access to sifted, like ridiculously good compost, I don't think that you really need to even use the tilther. Um, the only reason you'd want to is if you're adding in certain amendments and you just want to like mix that a little bit deeper into the soil. But honestly, you could use a wheel hoe with um, some different attachments on it, like the wing sweeps, and that helps to incorporate it down lower and you don't have to have a machine. Or you could just spread out the amendments and then rake it and then put the compost on top and then the water is going to help incorporate everything. So um, take all that with a grain of salt and uh, that's my opinion, I guess, on when I would and wouldn't use it. 